constituency that is reporting exactly. and keep that as a running provisional tally. Okay. It will, it, 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 will, it will lay to rest all these anxieties. It's a very simple thing. And, 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 and as I say, you know, Raila and his team are sometimes shockingly incompetent at just basic laying out an argument and making the point that they want to make. What they should say is that, look, it is, we, we don't have any basis for disputing the results that you have given. However, we'd like you to ascribe to a constituency by a number of polling stations reporting where these results are coming from. Mm -hmm. So that we know that in Nairobi, Starea is reporting five polling stations, and here are the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then those then are ascribed by parties and by candidates, and then we can see how the candidates stack up in each of those constituencies by polling stations. That, to me, is the transparency that NASA should be calling for at this point in time, because right now they have no basis for disputing anything. Mm -hmm. And neither do they have a basis for accepting anything. Uh, absolutely. Because okay. when, when, I, when we, we got to the end of that press conference and uh, Commissioner Combe says, see you in the morning, we almost fell off our chairs because we're thinking <laughs> all of us are waiting to, to get a running the re result. regular People update. are staying up. They stayed up last night to take care of business. They've been up the whole day running the elections. They're up now counting the votes. Where are you going until morning? Stay here with us and tell us what's going on. Take charge. That's what we're paying you for, to take charge. But now they're, they're living in the parties with their own devices, leaving the co political commentators to our own devices, and they're telling us to see, see you in the morning. What happens if by morning, uh, Orengo's rallying call has been heeded and people are already on the streets demanding answers from somewhere? And by that time, you have no time to tell them 34B is coming, 34A is Okay, let's, um, let's not take this lightly. Let's uh, take it right. seriously. But, but in, the, in the press conference, Raila Odinga has claimed that some NASA agents were not allowed to scan Form 34A. And he needs Ray, to tell, tell us, us where. Tell tell us which and ones. he needs to tell us which, which uh, agents from which polling or constituency. Are we asking too telling? much of, of, no, no, of no. Raila Odinga and should no, we be no, placing no, 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 the same no. amount of uh, he who the same burden proves. of responsibility? You know, he who alleges you must be able to prove your allegations. Okay. Yes. You can't just throw out statements and fuck it up. He needs to be able to back it up, including the dispute All that right. they have. So, so let me ask this, I just uh, this interesting question about Form 34A. So what happens if what is scanned is different from text? Then that's a basis for the, I think they already said if it. What is, they said if, they yeah. already said if what is scanned is different differs from, text, from alphanumeric, mm -hmm. yeah. the scan then, carries the day, yeah. because the scan is a is, true impression, is the true impression yeah. of what is in the polling center mm -hmm. uh, or what the telling station, uh -huh. and uh, it is signed by the agent. So right now, I think Raila, IBC yeah. already clarified that. Okay. So they can, on that it's they can get away with this claim of machine voting because it's an alphanumeric thing. You could build an, al an algorithm uh -huh. that but maintains a 1.2 scan. You can't dispute the scan. That's, so that's the mm -hmm. 34A, I mean 34B. So where does this leave us now? Because, um, like you said, it, it seems like we've been left to our own devices. Um, it's now almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, daybreak now seems like, you know, an eternity away. When IBC says, you know, we will see you in the morning, NASA is uh, saying what they're saying now. There's a rejoinder from, from Rafael Tuju. I mean, you gave a, a great, perhaps, um, middle ground towards solving this impasse, which is to say, you know, uh, to be very specific yeah. Yeah. With, with the streams. But then where does that leave the rest of them? Because there's, there's other players besides NASA, Jubilee, and IEBC. I think, that, you know, as, uh, as, as, as Joey said, they should be equally worried because they don't know whether that lead will hold. Mm. So if I were Uru, I'm not sure whether that lead is going to hold and, and, and where I need to be concerned because I, I, Uru also doesn't know where those numbers are coming from. He doesn't know which polling stations. He doesn't know which constituencies. Uh, you are attempting are to speak from. for for Uru no, 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 it's true. It's true, Yvonne. <laughs> just think about it. This, his lead could be wiped out in just no time. Okay, because you know the, these issues can tend to be very complicated yeah. from this, from that. Um, maybe Joy, you can answer this question. Ask the panelists. This is from Herbert Makinda. Ask the panelists to educate us. Is there a form 34A and 34B? The A is and what they is the difference. Bef he says, which one is uh, the form supposed to be used before crying? Are his words, but you know, I guess before crying, before crying, uh, before crying foul, uh, I imagine uh, I'm, I'm adding that 
to his last words. But I hope I remember my 34A and 34B. I think 34A is what they feel at the polling at center. The polling yes. center yeah. 34B? Yes. 34B is, is what they, is they feel at the constituency tallying yes. center. Okay. So the 34B is the all important one because yeah. once that is filled, yeah. that is and what is locked spend. down. Yeah. And mm. that cannot be changed. And that is the one that is announced. Yes. yes. As the final announcement. Yes, and I think now what we're but getting is from those 34, 34 A's, A's yeah? which are being sent. The, the, the one is calling by text. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are coming, running along. Mm. And that's what is being put up. Okay. So, uh, like I said, um, where do we go from here? What needs to happen going forward? Be before we get to that, uh, these other chaps, uh, <laughs> What chances do they have of tilting this one way or another, if at all? This case is a total waste of time. 0 0.07. <laughs> well, apparently not. They've got votes, so they're not a waste of time. There are people they who actually believe... They could have the MCAs in their, count in the, in the, in their no, counties. I think it's important for us to understand. That this, this is a testament that there are people who... who with whom their message resonated. Exactly. Although I think the numbers, I think we have <laughs> because more what does it disputed say? votes, yeah, more, more, more disputed, disputed votes, votes than, right. than, than the total number, the number three of, uh, yeah. of the, you know, um, other candidates. But they are, they, they are offering an alternative. You know, one of the things <coughs> is we always complain that we have no choices. But we are being given an alternative. There are some people who are taking those alternatives. They are so taking. They are, they, are, they are making a pick of bad theory. options and worse options. I don't know about that. You know, I think oh, we should oh, be oh, fair, oh. and I don't think that we should be so um, cruel okay. as to dismiss. Right. So, if we talk about alternative, fine. Let's talk about the politics of it and the numbers that we are seeing. What does it say that um, you know, from the second to the third? I mean, what is that? 4.8 million, and then the next person has, what, 26,000 uh, votes or 20,000 votes uh, <laughs> thereabouts. Um, okay, so 20,000 people, to be fair and respectful to these voters, decided that, you know, this is a candidate that was worth their time mm -hmm. and worth their vote and worth queuing, you know, for hours and hours, uh, you know, f to endorse them to be the next leader in their opinion. But if we put them collectively, is there any way that they could snatch something, anything? <laughs> Joe, you're giving me a look. So <laughs> even if we squint, <laughs> this is one of those, <laughs> those pictures. Even if we squint, these are provisional results. Our heads, we are not they? seeing it because <laughs> what do you one think? of the misfortunes <laughs> with, with running an ideological race is that you have to find people who share the same ideology as you. And those are the 20,000 people you're seeing yeah. who have the same idealistic um, imagination towards uh, attaining a change. But the, the truth of the matter is this particular election was the last battle of the titans. This is, is like the final show, the, the Odinga family versus the Kenyatta family finale. This is one of those uh, uh, races where an idea, the time had not yet come because we had to see this one out. And for many Kenyans, with the fever that has been there during the elections, don't want to imagine a runoff situation. So that don't, even if you are minded to support the ideals that the others represented, you voted with the consciousness of, I want this thing to end. I don't want another 60 days of, we are coming back to this again. So many people voted as if this was the runoff. That is why you're seeing these gaps opening. Because remember in 2013, that's the same narrative that happened. Mm. In the last two weeks, somebody came out with the maths of, if we actually go for a runoff, we'll need six billion. And guys were like, hey, we don't have that money. Right. So tell you what, eh? we love Masakarua, we love Peter Kenneth, but forget about that. Let's just agree there's two horses and the rest are donkeys. So it's the same narrative being played again. Guys are like, you know what, let's finish this first round. We don't want to come to a second round. So come 2022, these are guys who have a fighting chance. Because that time, there'll be no Kenyatta factor. There'll be no Odinga factor. The field will be wide open. And so if somebody can capture the imagination of the, the people of Kenya, they might actually have a chance against maybe uh, Honorable Ruto if he's running in 2022, God giving him life. So it's one of those things where it was a good idea, but the time was not yet. The idea was not yet uh, right to be born in Kenya at this time. So tilt the balance, I don't think so. This, this was for them a good adventure, excellent for their CV, mm -hmm. and also good for us to understand, okay, there are men who are, are strong enough to take this on.
Mm. Men who are strong enough. This was an adventure. They tried. Well, I think it's a starting point. Mm. They are a known entity. I mean, look, Abdul Badida is back on the ballot. Mm. Do you He's think Abdul Badida will manage to get, you know, similar number of votes uh, as uh, no. to what he got uh, no, 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 last no, time? No, 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 no. no. Or did the novelty wear off? Do you it's think? not even so much the novelty because yeah. you can see there are still some people who are still yeah. right there with him, yeah. you know. But I think that we need to build a culture where you know these candidates they come out and they build their political capital so this is a starting point and i want to agree with joy that at least this is the end of a contestation for the leadership of this country that has been going on since independence mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so as we put it to rest, mm -hmm. this is also an opportunity for a new order to rise, you know? Mm -hmm. And these people have a head start because yes. they are a known entity. I'm quite impressed with even how Joseph Nyaga is doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, I, I haven't seen much of him on the campaign but trail. But 27,000 people have seen I mean, much I'm, of I'm him I'm like, I'm looking at him and I'm like, you know, I didn't expect that kind of a showing. <laughs> but you Alex, know? you so should see the look on Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even for He's spoiling, by the way, because look, there are more disputed votes than, than the total number of votes. So, yeah, I mean, Alex, okay. So I'll let you speak what's on your mind because it's, it's very clear what's on your face, but I, I, let me you not know, interpret that. <laughs> I think what, what baffles me is this kind of exuberant excitement around the so-called donkeys. I think these guys... Wait, please don't call them donkeys. The donkey candidates. They say you've got horses and the donkey candidates. French candidates. The French candidates. Yes, yes. Or the second tier candidates. Oh, gosh, uh, a no. A term that they second tier got us into trouble uh, with the debates, absolutely. <laughs> the presidential debates. But I think that, you know, one, one of the things, not that Raelo Odinga and Uhuru are spectacularly qualified to run this country, but what I wanted to see from these other guys was some real capability and preparedness to take a stab at this office. But I thought that these guys were just a bunch of guys who just were trying to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, they did not convince me that they, they had what it takes, even at the basic elemental levels of understanding how government works, what the problems mm -hmm. are, what the solution spaces could be. I didn't see any articulation of that. And I spent a lot of time reading their manifestos. You know, Ekuros was atrocious. And so was uh, 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 Wainainas, the, the two that I read. And, you know, for people who have PhDs, come on, give me a break. I wanted to see some real demonstration of a struggle, grappling with the issues, laying out an ideological platform for how they want to depart from this ethnically divided politics that we've had for the last 50 years. I didn't see that. So I don't take them seriously at all. And I think they're a joke. They make it such that anybody who has anything behind their names could just show up and want to be president. And it just trivializes this mission of redirecting this country in a different direction. Mm. What sort of... Um I'm sorry about being very scathing in my attack, but, uh, but I, I think it's an affront to people as, who as have... As you notice, we're all shocked. <laughs> no, absolutely. Silence. I have a PhD too, but those guys just make me look <coughs> like they're a bunch of jokers because they just didn't put a credible case. Well, maybe you should stand. Mm. Maybe you should vie and you give us that run. credible case. <laughs> I think that, that I could they advise were, them if that they, they were asked brave me enough, too. that they were brave enough. You know, I think it also takes some measure of courage, you know, some measure of courage to put yourself out there and to expose yourself to the kind of ridicule that uh, they're they are exposing themselves to and the, the, the criticism. And I wouldn't be too hard. Um, are they all serious? Perhaps not. Some of them may be in for it. You know, I think one time Moy talked about some people believing that being the president was all about riding in a Mercedes Benz and, and, <laughs> and walking on a red carpet. I think there's that novelty, you know, that this is, um, you know, something that you can just walk into. But I do agree that um, uh, we do need people to give us some kind of direction, okay? Unfortunately, it is not coming from many of our leaders, not just them. And so to really, you know, just, um, you know, beat down on them when they have been courageous enough to put themselves we out need capability, there. not just courage. No, but think, yes, think but, uh, about I, it. I think that... Okay, uh, so compare and contrast with what happened, for example, in France. France decided to take a chance with somebody Macron. who had absolutely no idea 
how to run government and Macron decided was you know what? For, for economy yeah it was like let's let's turn a new leaf and look at this this is what three months into his presidency and his rating is even lower he's than he's melting that of, it's lower than that of, 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 of François Hollande. No, <laughs> I, I mean, Hollande left as being one of the most unpopular presidents France has ever had. But Macron and Emmanuel is going Macron the same is now, way, isn't he? He's, he's I mean, like he's at 30%. Yes, he has yes. tanked yeah. totally. And people are thinking to themselves, the where is the change that, off. yes, the novelty has worn off. And what we imagined was going to bring to the table, you are realizing, oh, the shine, all that glitter was not gold. Look also at the Americans. They decided to go on a tangent and look for Trump a maverick. Trump is 36% too. And Trump is a person who has been finally elevated to his area of incompetence, <laughs> such that they have to really work hard to bring him back in line, to bring him back in check. Mm. So sometimes when, when you have a, an aspiration and you're able to capture the imaginations of people, you may actually get what you wish for. And then you get there and you realize yeah. it's not what you thought it would be. Right, yeah. So sometimes having somebody who has been a couple of rounds around the block, yeah. Who knows their way around the neighborhood? Okay. May not be such and a bad thing. And this may be thing. the start to these candidates starting to know their way around the neighborhood and uh, maybe... A learning curve. Maybe, okay. they, maybe mm. they should get appointments in, in the next government. Maybe if, they if, should. If, if I were Uru or, or, or Raila, I would get some of these guys into my cabinet. No, but he tried I asked to Professor, get, Professor Weininer about that. I asked what him. did he say? He would never work with the. But, he, no, but, so but that's he the problem. No, no, but <laughs> last time <laughs> he tried to get Abdul Badida and uh, Ole yeah. Kiap into Dida. government. Yeah. Yes. And we told them, oh no, those people are politicians. And clearly they were not. But one was Balala. a teacher, one was an environmentalist. They would have had something to <laughs> offer. And they would have learned a little bit out of that experience of being in government. You know, Barack Obama brought know. Hillary Clinton into his government, and that was his challenge in the primaries in, in, in 2008. Yeah, but that tends to happen quite a bit, yeah. It okay. should happen here, too. It's called synergy. Absolutely, you a team of rivals. Energy. That's what you need here. Mm. All right. So um, I, I want us to talk about uh, issues and whether this can be an issue-based um, election um, while we wait to see the numbers. And we've been running an exit poll and asking people, you know, on what basis did you vote? Was it on the basis of a development agenda? Um, or was it, uh, you know, based on the manifesto, on ethnicity? Um, and, and, you know, if what they say is true and you know if it's anything to go by that there might be a, you know a general shift in that um, mm. and I want to to read here a tweet by Frederick Okango who says the political contestation in this country has been between the Odingas and the Kenyatta's it is coming to an end um, and um, so it's coming to an end and maybe Maybe, just maybe, we have the opportunity to start to say we're looking at people based on, on issues and, and, and what they bring to that. Um, are we at that point yet? I want to hear from you, Daisy, um, uh, you know, before, before we get into that. And we will have another exit poll in just a moment uh, to just take a look at what people are voting for and why. But are we there yet? If not, how long will it take to get us there? Um, to the point that uh, these two big names will no longer be there now that we have no big names and we have ordinary names like Daisy and Medivo. Joy and <laughs> Divo and, and Dida and, and that sort of thing. What will it take to get us there fully? Well, I, I would hope that um, the realization that politics affects your everyday life. If you ask me, we haven't done the issues because there's so many issues that... Kenyans have been grappling with that remain in abeyance. You're looking at corruption and the cost of corruption on our economy and our daily lives. That obviously hasn't been addressed in this um, election. There is no evidence of it. We're looking at health care. Remember, by the time we were going into the campaigns, nurses were on strike. strike. Shortly before, uh, before that, we had a 100 days doctor's strike. Yet, healthcare was not an issue. In fact, I remember alongside some of the campaigns, you were running news items of the crisis that was ensuing because of the nurses' strike. Mm -hmm. You know, this is obviously not an issue. Education, cost of living, the economy. So, I don't think that those that this campaign mm -hmm. has been driven by issues. As the tweet that you read, this is a contestation between dynasties. And there will be a price to pay for all of us as Kenyans. Because as we went into the campaigns, there were many <coughs> issues 
that we were grappling with mm -hmm. that we have not since addressed and we will have to deal with once we've settled. Remember, there was a drought. Um, uh, Amiwam um, yeah. invasion. Yeah, yes, that's right. Uh, famine. Yeah. Uh, these are issues that have not been addressed. We'll still have to deal. Mm. I saw the nurses tweeted and they said, we don't we care, don't who, care wins. who wins, yeah. we just want our money. Yeah. We will still have to deal with those issues. Right. Yet, I think that we've been rather irresponsible, even in the way the campaigns have been run, mm -hmm. because the people who should have been at least addressing some of these issues have been on the campaign trail. Okay, so let me ask this, because um, I think during the presidential debate, I did ask that question specifically with uh, respect to corruption. Professor Wainaina said it'll start with eliminating the two, you know, from the race, um, in a manner of speaking. So here's the question now, because everybody says this is the final duel between the Odinga and the Kenyatta dynasties, as it were. Will that be the start to issue-based politics, do you think, now that this decade's fight is coming to an end? Is it that simple? I don't think it is that simple, because uh, bear in mind that uh, Raila Odinga, Uru Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta, Moi, Kibaki are products of this society. Okay? They're, they're part of us. This, we, 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 do not, we do not get leaders from Mars. These people come from inside this society. Mm -hmm. There's a way that we, 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 are, we are raised and acculturated. And the survey that we did in 2014 mm -hmm. basically is pretty scary. You know, they're, 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 there is now something that we can basically say a coevolution of our manners and the structures of our society. Corruption has now become part of us. We don't even call it corruption. We call it eating. Why is Yvonne against me eating? Mm. What, what does Yvonne have against me? So corruption is now no longer an, a, a morality question or a vice. Mm. It is just something that we do. So I, I think we, 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 we all have to put a mirror in front of us and basically ask ourselves a very tough question. How do we want to be? And as David D. once asked, is it time for a divorce mm -hmm. in okay. this country? All right. Th those okay. fundamental questions have to be asked. And okay. I think the divisive politics that we have gone down the path for so many years begs those kinds of questions. All right. Let me, let me just ask this one. There's, there's a tweet here from Miss Rachel. She says, looking forward to never having Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga on our ballot papers ever again. Joy. Oh, wow. <laughs> they have children. That's Before we go to Linda. But they, they do have children. Yes. But I'm thinking even with what we've seen uh, of recent with incumbents falling, I don't think the, the, the fascination with these two families is ever going to be as high as it is right now. Because remember now we're coming to a, a situation where you've got a generation of voters who were children when post-election violence happened. Mm -hmm. We've got some voters who do not know who Saba Saba Moi even. is, yeah. who, what Saba Saba is. Yeah. So there are some of those things, even when, when I was listening to the president giving his final uh, speech uh -huh, uh -huh. and I was talking about his father Found, and the other yeah, liberators, the I was like, fathers, you know what, yeah. there's like 50% of your audience who has no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And some of us have to go to history, to read history. We were alive, but we were, we were not conscious at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, it's gotten to a place where even if their children do make a resurgence, that won't come back. But I can see where that particular uh, commentator is coming from because for too long, I think we've had some names that were too big to fail. Uh, there's, okay. uh, there's been a, a discussion uh, prior to this when we were uh -huh. looking at uh, for the NASA presidential bear, uh, flag bearer. Yeah. And part of the commentation we had then was if this was a Kalonzo Mudavadi ticket, that right now, we would be have talking different. very different numbers. Okay, so I'd but like you to hold that, that thought. Before, um, before on, you go, on that one. I would want to say this. Okay. The one conversation we must have as a country uh -huh. is about what we as Kenyans hold Want. dear as our values. Okay. National values, <laughs> rule of law issues. You know, oh, those yeah. are issues we must well, have conversations. Issues, yeah. I, the, I mean, yes, the software. The, the, yes. Because and that's it, it what matters. drives okay. the, the, the country. That's and, what and indeed, drives our and, society. And once we start to do that, we start talking about legislating some of these issues, which becomes a whole other matter. No, we need to have a conversation. No. We need to have a conversation so as yes. a country. We need what to have a conversation. Need an audit. I want we to bring in Linda into this conversation of audit of values of integrity. Mm. Hey, this is heavy. In as much as it's software, 
that conversation is not going to end anytime <laughs> soon. So Daisy, just give me a few minutes. I'll come back to you in a few minutes. And uh, it was very interesting listening to that conversation, especially touching on Form 34AB uh, by Joy. And, yeah. and I think it informs our viewers on what this whole contention is all about. So 